across Wisconsin from Civic Media. This is Up North News Radio. Now, live from our Lake Wissota studio, here's the founding editor of Up North News, Pat Brightlow. Well, hey there, Wisconsin. Good morning. It is 6.06 on this Monday morning, January 8th. And it's once again another beautiful day to have you here up north, live from Lake Wissota, from wherever you're listening across the Civic Media Radio Network, the Civic Media app, or through our social media video feeds. And if you're listening on demand by podcast, thank you for subscribing and taking us along on this Monday. I've got a question for you, especially those of you in the southern half of Wisconsin. Are you ready for the first winter storm? Also, Let's look at the positive side of things. It took this long to get to the first winter storm and details from meteorologist Brittany Merlot coming up. Here's another question. Did you feel it? Did you feel it yesterday when the sun rose one minute earlier than Saturday? Because <laughs> bit by bit, by bit, the days are now starting to get longer. Wait, I have another question for you. Are you ready for more football? as the Packers get set to uh, take it to the playoffs, go to Dallas. Uh, Dallas hasn't lost at home for over a year, and so can you think of a better way to get into the playoffs than by handing Packers former coach Mike McCarthy his first home loss in over a year? Uh, that would be really nice. Sunday, 3.30 is when the Packers and Dallas play in the wild card round. Uh, one more quick tease here. Tomorrow morning uh, at 7.06, we will have an interview with Governor Tony Evers. He's been scheduling one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews with a lot of Wisconsin media folks, uh, ourselves included, at Up North News. And so we will hear from the governor tomorrow morning at 7.06. Also, along the way today, we'll talk about former President Trump saying some pretty off-the-rails things over the weekend. The one that really caught my ear was claiming he could have done a better job than Abraham Lincoln of negotiating the end of the Civil War, which begs the question, how does one negotiate slavery with the South? What exactly would Trump have done? Kristen Lyerly will join us. Uh, we'll talk in part. She was at the game. We'll talk about that, but also we'll talk to her about a draconian new abortion law in Idaho being allowed to stay on the books for now, thanks to right-wing judges and justices. Selena Heller will highlight some of the stories she's working on for us at Up North News. You can find that at upnorthnewswi.com. This is the first Monday of the uh, the first working Monday of the new year, and it's the first Motherhood Monday of the new year. A perfect time to remind busy parents of some of the basic things we can all do to be a bit more involved in 2024 and in making sure we're supporting real pro-family candidates. Uh, so look for that coming up at about 7.30. Talk to Aaron Phillips and Kate Duffy. Uh, Civic Media News Director Terry Bell will have three things you need to know to start the week. That'll be coming up at 7.50. And, and again, frequent weather updates from Brittany Merlo and others as we go through the day. You can join us along the way at 844-967-2789. Again, 844-967-2789. We would love to have you along. You can call us or text us at that number. And you can either do so directly on your phone or do it through the Civic Media app. That's really the best way to go because you'll be able to keep up with all of the many uh, good shows and stations across the Civic Media radio network. You can email us as well, radio at upnorthnewswi.com. Or you can leave us a comment on one of the Facebook pages where you uh, can not only hear but also see Up North News Radio, where you could also hear and see on your screen 6 a.m. temperatures around the state. They look like this. It's 27 up here on Lake Wissota. Hayward's at 19. Park Falls, 20. Wausau reporting 28 degrees downtown. Green Bay's at 30. La Crosse, 27. Wisconsin Rapids, 29. Oshkosh, 30. Madison's at 26 degrees. And it is 27 in downtown Waukesha, where we find Mr. Greg Bach joining us to kick off the week. Mr. Bach, good morning. Hello. Is that, is that a yawn, or are you just getting excited to say hello? Just getting excited to say hello. Oh, very nice. How was your weekend? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Busy. Uh -oh. Busy. Okay. All Works. right. It worked, and then uh, I spent like Bridget and I spent, and the and Maybell. We went over to a good friend of ours' house and hanging out, hung out with their family, and just 
kind of did nothing. It was fantastic. And it, but I did have I did have a a, a mishap. Okay. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did a cookie exchange, and I had some leftover uh, cookies that were frozen. So I brought them out. I decided to put them in the microwave. Oh. And if you're watching the live stream, I'm going to put my thumb up here right here. <laughs> oh, no. What what happened to your thumb? I burned my thumb on caramel. Oh, like yes. It, like, yeah. like hot plastic on your skin. Mm -hmm. I was shook, shaken swearing yeah uh I, and it hurts it just hurts oh yes yeah yes oh my goodness yeah microwaves and and isn't it fun? microwaves are, are fickle little creatures you know it'll yeah. for something like mashed potatoes you have to oh. have them in there for like a day and a half for them to get warm yep. other things like caramel become like hot lava yep. in a matter of seconds yeah you like, know? i'll put it in for, for 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 four seconds oh the house is on fire yeah, right. Uh, I I recall my 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 dad burned him burned his his mouth on oh. a really hot cookie. Oh, uh, yeah. It's so you 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 got off easy with it being the thumb. Yeah. yeah. So so good on you. Um, did you did you watch the uh, the Packers beat the Bears in some particular place? I was not able to watch the game last night. Oh, we don't, you were yeah. you were indisposed. Indisposed. But I was catching up on the scores on my phone and. Mm -hmm. very excited for the fans very excited for the team i mean this is a you know there's there's the part of me is like oh go to the super bowl wouldn't it all make aaron mm -hmm. Rodgers watch every minute <laughs> I, I again i'm gonna say what's what's gotten me through this season is that the the bar of expectations has never been set very high when they have these bad games and they've had some bad games mm -hmm. it's been like okay the, again they, they mentioned this several times during the TV broadcast. This is the youngest team in the NFL. Mm -hmm. This is the youngest team ever to make the playoffs yeah. in the NFL. This is a young team. So they're, they're scrappy. They've got talent, but they're going to have some miscues along the way. Again, you're going up against a Dallas team that hasn't lost at home in over a year. So, I mean, they're granted Dallas's playoff record. Not that great historically, Yeah, but Look, it should, I, I just expect it to be a good game. That's all I'm hoping for. It's yeah. a good game, not a not a blowout where suddenly all of our youth and in, in, inexperience shows. So we'll see. A um, win is a win. That's right. I uh, will definitely take that. Also, apparently, there was like a little little little. There's, in my mind, there's no no such thing as a little earthquake. But by their standards, there was a little earthquake in the Crandon area over yeah. the weekend. I think about 2.5 or so on the Richter scale. That's not that, little. I know. That that would get my attention. Yeah. And by getting my attention, meaning I would suddenly feel something warm and yeah. wet down my leg. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's not the, – the world should not do that. And then people would say, uh, actually, the world does that 24 set actually. Yeah. But it doesn't do it here much in the Midwest. And no. I, I would not like that. No bueno. I no. was in Los Angeles no. for an earthquake once. It was like – it was three and a half, four. I'm like, that's – don't, don't, don't just <laughs> slough it off yeah. as God yeah. shakes the planet and like, meh. Yeah. That sounds good. Oh, it was an F1. Oh, please. You know, meh. come to me, come to me with a real tornado, you know, until it we hits stand your outside house. and watch for an F4. Yeah. <laughs> Stop being a baby. It was, just, it was weird. There was just weird stuff over the weekend. The Crandon earthquake, um, Alaska airlines, a part of the plane fell off. It fell off. It fell <laughs> off. And it's like, you know, suddenly you're in a convertible. You know, it's like, oh, hey, look, open air, you know. It's like, but, but no, at 400 miles an hour and 16,000 feet. Sir, I may be new here at Alaskan Airlines, but I think we're supposed to have a tail, right? We're, <laughs> yeah. we're, not, like, we're not like the shuttle. We don't like, it, we don't like drop pieces as we're flying. No, and of all the things you want to have faith in, yeah. I want faith in the the mechanics or whoever they are who were supposed to that had been an emergency exit door they they covered it because of the way the plane was configured they didn't need a door there if you're going to weld it or whatever it is you do maybe some gorilla glue whatever whatever you do <laughs> i'd like that to stay in place please some scotch you know? tape and hope yep that'll do it that? i'm what's supposed that? to go flying on wednesday oh my god oh. <laughs> so i will what's the uh what's the the guy who's got all the flex seal stuff i mean he's, oh. he's gonna he's gonna do the thing next with uh wait we took this airliner and we used flex seal and, yeah you know the door didn't come off well maybe maybe alaska Airlines should have used that yeah i don't know Try, tried to watch the uh golden globes um golden globes are always kind of a 
hit or miss. I didn't even thing, know they were you know? on. Yeah. Yep. They were. They well. They moved to CBS. They've been on NBC forever. Yeah. And to me, one of the more awkward moments was when the uh, the Golden Globe for uh, the brand new award for best stand up comedy special went Ugh. to Ricky Gervais, and you can feel the whole room kind of tense up. You know, because he was such a controversial Golden Globes host for a couple of years there. And they were like, well, oh, this, this his, is awkward. His last special, he was quite transphobic. Yes, but he was. We didn't, guys... we didn't finish it. Honestly, we didn't finish it. No, We're I like, used to no, love his. This isn't I, working for us. I used to yeah. love his stand-up. I love his shows. But mm -hmm. I'm like, and him and, and Jimmy Carr, like two like very smart British comics. Yeah. I thought they'd make fun of make making fun of transphobia in a way that was like ironic. But they just dug in like yeah i, like, I kept like, waiting for them to turn the corner yeah, on it you and know they didn't yeah uh, so it seemed a little odd that it got the golden globe award but that's do you have we're the, in award season do you have the hbo max yes i'm going to suggest a special for you that i think you'll truly love good i need a palate cleanser yes did please. you watch gary gullman's the great depression no watch that it's a wonderful okay. special slash it's about him going through severe mental breakdown but mm. talking about it, but also doing stand up, it's amazing. Well, if you like that, then you're gonna have to set your DVR because does does Taylor Tomlinson's new show does that start tonight? I think it starts tonight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I from from the stand up I've seen from her, mm -hmm. I I worry about her. I <laughs> mean, she too talks about being bipolar and all of that, but you know, just listening to her talk, I'm like, oh boy, Pat, I'm gonna she's, give you a, a, give pressure, you a piece of advice. Pressure, pressure. You know, a comedian, you should worry about all of them. <laughs> okay i believe you yeah. yes uh so anyway so we, we watch a little golden globes and then tonight on tv will be uh the college football championship michigan versus washington playing in houston and <laughs> honestly why kids do if you're gonna do that do it on new year's day when everybody's watching bowl games and then have your yeah. one really big bowl game at the very end there's your, there's your free advice uh, a lot more sports to talk about on the other side of this brief pause wherever you're listening across wisconsin on this monday january 8th when you're here you're up north you're live from lake wasota all across the civic media radio network i'm pack right it's nice to have you along back in a bit It was on this day in 1980 that Prince made his national television debut performing I Want to Be Your Lover on NBC's The Midnight Special. We'll have the rest of today's history lesson and musical memories coming up well, about a half hour from now or so. Uh, quick look at sports here. Obviously, we've talked about the Packers already. What they did was they beat the Bears 17-9. to The Packers have now beaten the Bears 10 games in a row. And finished the season nine and eight. Not bad after starting the season two and five, but they've uh, won seven of their last 10 games. And again, so they'll play in the wild card round of the playoffs in Dallas on Sunday at 3 30. Uh, we mentioned the college football championship is tonight in Houston, Michigan versus Washington. The Milwaukee Bucks lost on the road in Houston Saturday night. They are home tonight to take on the Utah Jazz. The Badger men's basketball team, uh, number uh, 21st ranked in the nation, they beat Nebraska on Saturday, never trailed in that game at all. The Badger men have now won four straight and 10 of their last 11. Their next game is at Ohio State on Wednesday. The seventh ranked Marquette men's basketball team lost at Seton Hall on Saturday, but they're uh, they're still uh, two and two in the Big East, 11 and four overall. They will host Butler on Wednesday at the Five Serve Forum. The uh, Marquette women's basketball team is at Seton Hall on Tuesday. The fifth-ranked Badger men's hockey team is now working on a nine-game winning streak after sweeping Notre Dame. That's the first nine-game winning streak for Badger men's hockey in 34 years. You got to go back to 1990, and uh, they are now 10 and two atop the Big Ten. The Badger women's hockey is third ranked in the country, and they are now 16 and four on the season after sweeping Merrimack uh, over the weekend. 
Uh, there's a, a lot going on out in the world. It's We always you know like to say there's a lot to unpack, but we're going to try to unpack the news here for you at 622 right now. A lot of what we are going to start with deals with the weekend anniversary of the January 6th attack. And all last week, being back from vacation, I, I never mentioned that my, my beach read uh, for this last go-round was the Heather Cox Richardson book, Democracy Awakening. I know a lot of folks read Heather Cox Richardson's uh, daily newsletters. They are brilliant in putting the day's political events into perspective, often with a historical context. Uh, if you are a fan of Heather Cox Richardson, you'll like the book, but you will also, I had to put the book down many times because it just made me very angry at the things that we know have happened. All of the warning signs have been out there for generations about places this country could go to, the dark places this country could go to if we essentially took our democracy for granted. And it, it just shows that, again, Trump was not the beginning of this movement. He's merely the latest manifestation and has taken it further than other, other politicians before that. Just look at this weekend as Trump was rambling across Iowa, uh, referring to the insurrectionists as patriots and hostages, which, by the way, begs the question, which is it? Are they hostages who he's promising to pardon? Because I also thought they were FBI undercover people and Antifa people. So which is it? Which which are the group that beat police with baseball bats and American flags, um, who s sprayed them with chemicals, who hunted for lawmakers, who put up a gallows outside the, the U.S. Capitol? Are, are these really hostages? That's what he's that's the case he's making. He also, again, over the weekend, praised dictators, uh, referring to President Xi multiple times as brilliant for, as he put it, ruling one and a half billion people with an iron fist. That's the guy who soiled the presidency previously and wants to be there again. There was a, a shameful display of this by uh, New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik when she too talked about the J6 hostages, as they put it, on Meet the Press with Kristen Welker. Kristen Welker didn't push back, didn't challenge that wording at all. And I gave Kristen Welker a pass. She's an experienced reporter, but she was new at hosting Meet the Press. I was I was content to let some of the rust, you know, be kicked off in terms of you know hosting a, a show like this on Sunday mornings. That was completely inexcusable. The the way that I see it, uh, not challenging her and others who could be summed up the way our, our regular Friday guest Mark Jacob did over the weekend when he said, with each passing day. The Republican Party acts more like the philosophical successor of Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma City bomber. And I know that in saying that, that's going to cheese some people off, cheese some regular folks off who vote Republican. Well, don't, because we're not talking about most people that we know who vote Republican don't talk like this. And they understand that January 6th was an attempt to overthrow an election. It's the politicians, the people who get in power and support this, who stick with Trump day in and day out despite the many crimes and the many ways he telegraphs how he wants to upend democracy. Those are the folks who are, at this point, aptly described the way that Mark Jacob named them. And it's, it's not nice. And it's going to lead to a busy 2024. And as I said, we'll talk in our next hour to our friends from Motherhood for Good about, you know, the the little things that can get started right now to make sure that 2024 isn't some kind of a, a, a bellwether year in the continued uh, corrosion of democracy, but instead where we see Americans of all political stripes take a stand and say, look, democracy, like it or not, is, is most uniquely defined in this way compared to all other systems. Democracy is properly described as the losers of elections go willingly, that there is a peaceful transfer of power that started with George Washington. 
And yet here's Donald Trump not only fighting that once before, but telegraphing that you know violence would be okay this year as well. And here he has continually put himself up there as the greatest president, comparing himself to Washington, comparing himself to Lincoln, and saying over the weekend that he could negotiate a, a better deal you know, for the Civil War, that he thought that if, if he were there, uh, he, he would, he said he'd be so good at negotiating that people would never know if Abraham Lincoln was any, any good. <laughs> That's actually, and, and again, when he says the Civil War could have been negotiated, I mean, the Washington Post has already reached out to some historians who respectfully, shall we say, disagree. Because again, what are you, what are you negotiating? after the Confederacy fires on Fort Sumter and starts to leave the Union, secede from the United States over the issue of slavery. What does that tell you Donald Trump would be willing to do? We already know the answer because we already know where he is on Ukraine. We already know that he would he loves Putin, respects him, thinks he's a strong, brilliant person. And so, you know, if you got to give up a little bit of Ukraine, that's fine. Amazing how that would have worked out in Europe. You know, when when Hitler was doing the same shtick, this is the guy that you want negotiating. He hasn't negotiated anything. He never negotiated a health care plan. He never negotiated an infrastructure plan. He's not a negotiator. He's not a successful businessman. He's a snake oil salesman who's done good the first time, got lucky the first time, lost the second time, and yet is coming back at another kick of the can, hopefully with Americans who've read books like Heather Cox Richardson's and others and are better prepared to stand up for our democracy. More with Kristen Lyerly coming up in just a bit. You're up north. What do you think? Kristen, do you believe in love now? Do you believe in Jordan love? Now um, I a- always believed in Jordan love. <laughs> you have. <laughs> Never in doubt from yeah. Dr. Kristen Lyerly. How are you? I'm good. And that music makes me feel like, okay, I can do Monday. Of course you can. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Greg giving us his little Huey Lewis dance. <laughs> yeah. It's adorable. It is. <laughs> if you can't see this. You really ought to turn on Facebook so that you can. <laughs> You're good. welcome. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, were you in the game outside at the tailgating? What were you up to yesterday? We did all of it. We okay. tailgated. Our tailgate is brilliant. We had, I'm not joking, bear stew and bear tenderloin made from real bears. <laughs> you weren't kidding about that post. I was not. Wow. It was really- wonderful and you know the fans were so great the bears fans were great the packer fans were so excited it was a beautiful day it was just a wonderful experience and i find that this is kind of a unique thing every time i go to a game i don't have season tickets so i always sit somewhere different Mm -hmm. every time i go to a game i leave with a whole new group of friends and that's exactly what happened last (laughs) of course you do of course you do you're just like (laughs) the friendliest person Mm-hmm. Like, it's not just me it's the people around you and you know you're high-fiving everybody and everybody was in such good spirits it was it was a blast that's awesome yeah I, we have you know we, you're going to different parts of the stadium i have pretty much the same bar stool i sit on each time if i'm <laughs> home if i go to our, our local uh, watering hole here and sometimes people will try to talk and i'll just kind of look out, out, out the side of my eye i'm like I'm watching the game. <laughs> leave, leave me alone. I just want to watch the game. Wow, mean Pat Kreitlow. Me well, I, I actually want to watch the game. Not mean. And uh, then when they score a touchdown, then we're all high five in and everything else. But you know, I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> That's me. There is something though about like I was talking to some people who sometimes sit in the box because you know there are a lot of Packer people who are associated here. And if mm-hmm. you are watching in a bar or watching in the box, you kind of aren't watching the game. But if you're in the bowl. On those aluminum bleachers, oh. hearing all of that, that is like, it just sucks yeah. you into it. That is oh, the yeah. experience. 
Yes, it is. Uh, I've, I've, I've sat – those aluminum bleachers, though, holy cow. Yeah. If you don't remember a cushion or something. Oh, you walk away, you're like, Although, everything hurts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I, I assume you, you were now at the time of the season where you drive to Lambeau Field. You don't take that 10-mile bike ride or whatever it is? Yeah, we, we drove okay. and we, we street parked and, you know, we did the whole okay. thing. That's another Good. great thing about the Packers. You, there's no ramp. You know, nope. when you go there, you park in somebody's front yard and, yeah. you know, they usher you in. They've got a sign that says, you can use my bathroom for free. They give you a little bottle of water. It's adorable. The Midwest, we're ladies and so, gentlemen. The Wisconsin Midwest. rules. Wisconsin just rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, look, um, I made a kolache for you. <laughs> yeah. Can I point out one other thing? Sure. When we talk about 1849, often we're talking about the abortion ban in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. But today, when we talk about 1849, that is the number of days that the bears have gone without a win over the Packers. 1,849 days the Bears have been winless oh over the Packers. Look, look at you, you just coming went... off the top rope with deep cut I trivia. Know. Wow. <laughs> and just so like, like, when we talk about 1849, the Bears <laughs> suck. All right. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's all we need to and again we you know all of us know a bears fan or two and you can just you can just feel it it used to be the way that cubs fans felt for 108 years and now it's squarely on on the bears fans mm, shoulders yeah. I, how long are they going to be this bad thoroughly disagree mm. when it comes to cubs fans they have lived in a hundred they lived in a 108 year bubble where they mm -hmm. still thought they were the best team ever <laughs> every time every yes. time they come to well, milwaukee they just be like, we're the Cubs. I'm like, yeah, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to go another 108 years. Good. Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> hey, as we uh, look more at some of the, the headlines over the weekend, uh, Kristen, I have to ask you as an OBGYN, we've talked about Idaho before, but uh, th this is less about uh, this anti-abortion, this abortion ban in Idaho. It's less about Idaho than it is about the current makeup of the U.S. Supreme Court, because it always seemed that when these draconian measures would get passed, a court would say, "No, no, no, that we're gonna we're gonna put that on hold while we hear whether this is legal." And I have to admit, I did quite a double take when the U.S. Supreme Court uh, essentially said that Idaho's uh, again draconian, just extreme abortion ban is going to be allowed to stay in place. They'll hear arguments in like April. They might decide it by June. I mean, I'm sure this isn't the first time it happened, but it really took me back. Usually these kinds of laws are like, hold on, Sparky, we'll we'll get to you. I, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I, I just can't even understand what's happening with the Supreme Court and what's happening in Idaho. So essentially what they said was this – law, it's not a law, this rule that Congress, an act of Congress called EMTALA, which means that if you show up at the emergency room, you have to be treated regardless of your ability to pay. It doesn't specifically talk about what you're treated for. It doesn't say, so if you show up with a heart attack, we have to take care of you. Also a stroke. It doesn't say those things. It just says, when you show up at the emergency department, you have to be treated. But now it says, unless you need an abortion, in which case you don't get to be treated. For folks who don't follow it closely, EMTALA is the Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act, E-M-T-A-L-A, EMTALA. And yeah, again, this is a case of this is what the law says, this is what the rule says, and then a court comes in and says, well, we're going to micromanage the interpretation of this. And it's... It, it's it's going to make things a lot tougher for women in Idaho and some of these other states. I guess it's not the world's biggest surprise, given what the U.S. Supreme Court did in you know with the Dobbs decision. But it is just that reminder as we head into 2024, the importance of every single election, every election, not just a state Supreme Court election, but every presidential election, because they appoint you know justices who could be as politician-like as these ones are, and. It's really incumbent upon every American to keep their eye on, on the ball when it comes to Supreme Court seats. Supreme Court seats, but all the way down the ballot, too. I mean, not to get distracted from the Santala issue, but the stuff that affects you locally, those are the elections that we often have little information about 
but they have a huge impact on what your kids are being taught in school and what your roads and bridges look like and how much tax you pay locally, all of those things. And they are, like I said, such low information elections, and they're often nonpartisan elections that they can be very confusing as you are approaching the ballot box and you're trying to figure out who to vote for, who is really the right person for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk to uh, Governor Tony Evers tomorrow at 7.05, and that will be one of the questions. will be about whether um, Wisconsin women and their allies will continue to show uh, high voter turnout as they have since the, the Dobbs decision was handed down uh, a year and a half ago. So listen for that tomorrow morning. Let me switch to a different health topic, and it it gets into this this thing that amuses me, the supposed war on chocolate milk, you know, that, that Tom Tiffany and some of these <laughs> other Republicans like to like to talk about. And, you know, like, okay, sugary drinks. There, there's a, a, a new uh, report out that says uh, it's, it's a new analysis by, oh, let's see, the, uh, Scott Kaplan, an assistant professor of economics at the U.S. Naval Academy in Maryland, and uh, commenting on a study that says taxes on sugary drinks cut consumer sales by 33%. In other words, now because of that higher tax, people go, you know, I don't really need that. And there turns out to be a benefit. Now, we talk about this all the time, so-called sin taxes in cigarettes and liquor. Mm-hmm. And I will tell you as a former legislator, when people say, why, why do you guys tax cigarettes so high? Because they work. The sin taxes work. And that's it's proven again by this analysis that a doctor like you can tell people all day long, you know, you shouldn't have that sugary drink. You shouldn't smoke, whatever the case may be. But once there's a, a shall we say, a way to fund roads and schools and things that, that get assessed on that, that economic motivation is just as much or more so than a doctor recommendation on healthy habits. I think it's very compelling. <laughs> and actually, I can talk all day long to my patients about what they should do. Like, you know what you should do. You know you shouldn't drink so much soda. But until it actually hurts you somewhere, like in the pocketbook, you're not thinking about long-term consequences. So, yeah, that's why they're so that's why those sin taxes are so effective. It hurts you in the pocketbook right now. And so related to that, and this gets us back to the chocolate milk thing, is that the the USDA and the Biden administration uh, are, are being accused of wanting to ban chocolate milk. No, they're not. But they are saying, if you're going to have flavored milk in school, you've got to find ways to add less sugar to it. You've uh, you know fewer sweeteners go you know maybe it's more natural sweeteners whatever the case may be but get the level of sugar down in what's served to our kids in school and of course rather than going along with something that is beneficial to health you've got all these Republicans immediately trying to politicize it as Joe Biden wants to take away your chocolate milk they'll have to rip my chocolate milk from my cold dead hands and it's just, just so much drama over again taking care of our kids and each other. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how we do it right now, isn't it? It's <laughs> Everything is black and white, good or bad, and they package all of these messages, regardless of what it is, without any nuance to, to bring people over to their side. There was less competition amongst the fans at the Packer Bear game yesterday than there is in the political <laughs> arena over chocolate milk. It's true. It's absolutely true. What do we always say? When you get, when you get regular folks together, you know, friends mm-hmm. and neighbors, and some may vote one way, some may tend to vote the other way, but they can get along with each other. They can talk mm-hmm. where there are differences. You know, they don't go uh, erecting a, a gallows and saying, well, let's hang somebody who doesn't agree with us. You know, yeah. uh, it, ju- it just gets us back to the, the, the January 6th anniversary over the weekend and, and not uh, pun intended, not sugarcoating, you know, what, what history was on that day. Mm-hmm. And I just hope I just want people to keep that in mind. And that's why I use it again to say that coming up in our next hour, your friends from Motherhood for Good will be here to talk about ways that people can be involved. And you are always my poster child for that. Of the, <laughs> you know, of the simple country doctor <laughs> who said, No, let's let's talk to people about, you know, really caring about who's on your ballot and what issues they're talking about. Mm -hmm. There are so many problems in the world to solve. I think if you, no matter who you're talking to and what their ideology is, 
as you get into the conversation, you recognize that there are many things that can be done, but they are not being done because so many of our leaders right now are focusing on this competition instead of actually finding a way to take some of the sugar out of chocolate milk. Yeah. It's, it's not that hard, people. It's not that hard if you just want to act, you know, in the public interest. So we, uh, so let's get, get ourselves back to uh, where we started here. And that would be the Packers making it to the playoffs. They will be uh, in Dallas. I'm, I'm sure some Packer fans will go down, but at least everybody else is going to make their plans for Sunday afternoon. So do you do anything different playoff wise? Do you, do you instead turn it into a house party, you know, or something? What uh, do you have a favorite place where you go to watch the game when you're home in, in Green Bay? Sadly, I will be working for this playoff game. Oh, but no. Recognize that, that this is the Cowboys, and who coaches the Cowboys? Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy. The former enemy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike McCarthy has plenty of old friends back in Green Bay, so this is much more than just a game against the Dallas Cowboys. This is very personal. Oh, very true. Mm -hmm. This is they're, they're, We're, we're going to get so sick of hearing about Mike McCarthy this week. <laughs> And, which I actually hope is a good, I hope it motivates people to go, okay, fine. Let's just go out and beat him. You know, <laughs> not even worry about, you know, everybody else on the team. Just, this is all about Mike McCarthy at this point, <laughs> who, by no. the way, I, you know, yeah, it, it wasn't the most acrimonious departure. It was a, it was definitely a parting of the ways. Mm -hmm. And so now we get to, you know, hopefully kick his butt. That's, this is how things work in the NFL. Yeah. Yep. It's mm -hmm. not personal. It's only football. It's That's only it. football, but ultimately, at the end of the day, all we need is love. There you oh, go. Bum, you da, da, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have today's history lesson and musical memories, and Selena Heller from Up North News will join us as well in just a bit. Wherever you're listening, live from Lake Wissota, all across Wisconsin, you're up north. Back in a bit. Now, of course, we got when you play the king. You don't just get chair dancing from Greg Bach, but from Kristen Lively as well. Woo! Yeah, he's always dancing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Elvis Presley born this day in 1935. So, do, do do the math on that, Pat. 80, 89 years old. Yeah, 89 years old. He would be 89 years old. Uh, passed away in 1977, of course. If you uh, believe that. If you believe that. <laughs> it's all because his middle name, Aaron, is not spelled correctly on his tombstone that people think, yeah, maybe that's not actually him there. Mm -hmm. Selena Heller joins us as well from Eau Claire along with... <laughs> <laughs> well, here, Whiskers joins us along with Selena Heller when she can peek around his butt now and then. How are Hi, you? Mary. I'm well. How's everyone? Good. Good. Peachy. We, we, you, you had quite the weekend event that we're going to ask you all about in just a minute here. So stay tuned all for right. that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, we mentioned uh, that that David Bowie, uh, Elvis Presley was born this day. So is David Bowie. Uh, Twelve years later, in 1947, David Bowie. His, do you know his birth name? Not you, Greg. You can see the answer, <laughs> ladies. I didn't know. I it. feel like I should know this, but right. I don't. can I give a hint? No. Sure. He shares the name with another famous singer. Famous British <laughs> singer. Famous. English hey, hey, we're the monkeys. <laughs> his name yes. is Mickey David. Dolenz. His name is Mickey Dolenz. No, no, no. Dave. <laughs> Davy Jones, play a little Modern Love while we talk about that. that he, he changed his name at age 18. Uh, because he saw, he saw, it was inspired by the Bowie knife. He liked the name Bowie. And he wanted to avoid confusion with Davy Jones. So David Jones, born this day in 1947, passed away in 2016. And uh, then he changed went, his name to David Bowie. And then he went to Ziggy Stardust. Yes, he did. And the Thin yep. White Duke. Mm -hmm. Yep. On this day in 1982 was the breakup of the Bell System as AT&T agreed to divest itself of 22 subdivisions like, you know, Wisconsin Bell, Northwestern Bell, Atlantic Bell, all of those, and, and opened up more competition when you tear down a monopoly. 
Are you listening to Washington, D.C. here in the 21st century? Mm -hmm. Uh, Pat called you out. Yep. President uh, George W. Bush signed the No Child Left Behind Act into law this day in 2002. Uh, Congresswoman Gabby Giffords was shot and wounded in the, on this day in 2011 as part of a mass shooting in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, here's another uh, birthday. Uh, Mike Reno is still with us. He is 69 years old today, born in 1955. If you don't know the name, you know the group Loverboy. Such an anthem. It actually feels, I feel like I'm violating something by playing this on a Monday. It's like, no, 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 this is a Friday song. <laughs> Too early. <laughs> yep, yep. No, it really, it really <laughs> thinks about you. Like, the first thing on Monday, you're like, oh, here comes the weekend. Just make it through. <laughs> yep. uh, Mike Reno's uh, birth name was Joseph Rynoski, and he was born in New Westminster, Canada. Wait, say that name, say name again? Uh, Joseph Rynoski. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's a rock star uh, name. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> we already mentioned that Prince made his national TV debut on the Midnight Special this day in 1980. Uh, the Beatles' Rubber Soul became their seventh U.S. their seventh number one album in the U.S. on this day in 1966. And on this day three years ago, 17-year-old Olivia Rodrigo, uh, known as being an actress on various Disney shows, released her debut single, Driver's License. <laughs> That sounds I, like stalking. I, <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Um, I just remember the Saturday Night Live skit where all these guys are like shooting pool in a bar, and next thing you know, they're just all singing the song in unison because it had become just this runaway hit. Well, that's another thing that our listeners could not see was Greg's head as that bill at the beat was building, like, you know. Greg likes this song. This song slaps. I love a good pop song. I love pop songs. Oh, here's here's the problem with letting Grandpa ch- uh, pick the songs for the day. It wasn't until I'd finished this whole list and got all the little excerpts ready that just a little little flag in the back of my head said, "Wait a minute, you should check the lyrics on this one." And I'm just right away going, "Oh yes, okay." Quickly, I'm, I'm googling, you know, driver's license, clean lyrics. So, oh. so that I put that on. Back in yep. my day, they didn't swear on records. They just talked about <laughs> love and going to sock hops. <laughs> <laughs> and so it goes on this Monday morning at 6.56. This is January 8th. This is National Clean Your Desk Day, National Gluten-Free Day, English Toffee Day. Mm. Is, is English toffee oh. gluten-free? I don't know. I think so. Who cares? It also says this is show and tell at work day. Which is funny because that's basically what Selena does with us every Monday. Is she I does show it. and tell of the story that she's working on. And I did off show and cat. tell at work, and I got sent to HR, and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> there are boundaries on what we show and uh, tell at work, Greg. Limitations. <laughs> we don't combine it with National Bubble Bath Day, which is also what today These, is as well. They were tasteful pictures. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what's on the, the calendar for today. Selena, how did you get roped into judging a food contest for a food you don't like? <laughs> what? I've judged a lot of food contests over the years. Like, yeah. And so it, what was this one? This one was chili. And I don't like chili. And I even said that. So I put it out there, but it didn't matter. And I think so, that, and, that probably and, made it more attractive. Like, oh, we got to get her in doing this. You know? know what I pitched also, or I said, like, you know, okay, well, I have a clean palate. I don't have any ba- biases. <laughs> so that works. I also have had to judge um, beer contests or beers like micro brews and things like that. And I don't drink beer. So same kind of. <laughs> Why don't you just say no then, Selena? Yeah. Yes, Selena. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean, I put, I say, I don't eat chili or well, I don't say I don't eat chili. Just say, no, yeah, I'm don't, busy. Stop you know? being so Midwestern. No. Just be like, nothing. Yes. But uh-huh. you know what? So there were two other judges and I actually, I was like, okay, hopefully they think the same or I'm not way off. <laughs> so one of them did pick the same one I did. So I felt, you know, good about that. It All wasn't. three of you <laughs> apparently didn't like chili. That's what we found out that day. We don't like chili. It's not good food. Wouldn't that be great? Soup or something? I was gonna say I was gonna say cream of mushroom was the winner because they have such, such Who bland won the beer palettes. contest? Bud Light. <laughs> oh, no. Michelob Ultra, you're the winner. 
Yeah. It was at the, El the local Elks Club, the fraternal organization. Which I'm and sure they're very thankful you were there, yeah. even though we've just completely trashed the concept <laughs> of them bringing you on as a judge. But I know that. <laughs> okay, here's the controversy. Well. And they didn't have any with noodles yesterday. And I, I, because I'm a believer that chili doesn't have noodles. And I grew up with that. My, of course, my parents made chili and I always tried to eat it, you know, then. Well, here's a, de <laughs> here's a debate we're going to continue on the other side of news. <laughs> oh, uh, we're talk. Kristen, we'll see you back on Thursday. Yes, and tonight on Pete's show at nine. All right, Pete Schwab is show Nightlight. You'll see, <laughs> you'll uh, hear her there as well. Have a great day, Kristen. We'll talk to you later, Isn't and everybody right? else back after this. You're up north. Our awesome farmers market and the Shaw five forty a.m. and one hundred one point one FM WAUK. Your news, conversations, and a whole lot of fun. It's all on your local Civic Media radio station or the Civic Media app.